black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody who... We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. On the same brother Omar. Peace be unto you all. Peace. I'm just, I am deeply honored and pleased and thankful for your inviting me to uh, this, I think, wonderful, wonderful uh, situation here. And um, I'm humbled by the distinguished panel, you know, and I've learned a great deal from everyone that has spoken so far. And hopefully I'll be able to share something that might be a benefit. I asked myself a question. I said, uh, what is it that black people can do to stop being a nigger, mm. <laughs> being called a nigger. Come on now. We look at 
all that we've been through and we look at all of the plans that have been suggested to us. But we have to realize one thing is that they were suggestions. We had to, I mean, even being a nigger mm -hmm. is a suggestion. Come on now. We don't have to adhere to those suggestions. I remember, um, I think it was Minister Barakhan said many, many years ago, he said that the white man has been successful in preventing a certain marriage from happening within the black community. And he said that that marriage was the marriage of wealth and knowledge. Mm. We've had people come up, whether it was individuals, and they had not they had knowledge, but they had no wealth to implement that knowledge. Mm. And then there the, and then there are those that had wealth. And they have no knowledge to be able to keep that wealth. Mm -hmm. We have been we have been sold on an idea that we are as a people not a monolithic people. There's some truth to that. But we have to ask ourselves and take a look at all of the other people in this country. They've had enough sense to see the importance of coming together in spite of their differences, in spite of them being individuals. It is important that we think on these things because if we are to stop being a nigga and stop being called a nigga, we are going to have to do things a little bit different from what we've done in the past. That's right. Now, the past is 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 a is a is a good thing because we can look back and we can say, oh man, look what these brave, fearless, even though they were fearful, people did. We today, we're not confronted with the actual physical trauma of slavery. but we are confronted with the intellectual, spiritual, moral trauma of slavery. Mm -hmm. Now, sure, we've had many, 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 many problems in the past, and we undoubtedly have many, many, problems today. But there is a saying, when the dream is big enough, the facts don't matter. Mm. The facts of what we've been through, the facts of what we're confronted with, if our dream is big enough, and what I would like to do at this time is I would like to replace a word in that phrase, because Dr. King had a dream and it put us to sleep. I would say when the vision is big enough, the facts don't matter. 
It doesn't matter who wants to keep us down. If our vision is big enough and we tie into and latch on to that vision, there is no one on this planet can stop us from our liberation. Sure. I got involved with this particular movement because it talked, of, it used a certain word. I wasn't uh, concerned about Mississippi, but the word that caught my eye was Exodus. Because if we are to really come into and be what we can be, we have to Exodus. That's a big step. That's right. Because we look at when the Europeans left Europe and came here to these shores, they had the exodus from a known way of living and come and take a chance here. We beloved people have the exodus. We have to have a vision to Exodus too. Because if we don't uh, come out of, I, 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 I was raised up as a young man, as a Christian. And I remember the story of the Israelites having to leave Pharaoh. They had the Exodus, but Moses had a problem. And that problem were the people that he wanted to free or to liberate had become accustomed to the way that they were living with Pharaoh. We have that same issue today. We're talking about Exodus into Mississippi. Now, that means that a lot of people are going to have to give up the comfort. Right. Even though it's a, it's a sorry comfort, it is comfort nevertheless. That's right. They have to give up that comfort in order to get something better. Mm -hmm. I want us to divorce the idea that there is anybody or anything that can stop us. We can't even stop ourselves mm -hmm. if we latch on to the vision. Yes, we did. Someone stated earlier, our generation failed our younger people. Because we didn't exodus. We were sold an idea of integration. I remember reading uh, a book by uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. And he was talking about the situation that happened during the civil rights era, the beginning of it. And when those when we when 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 we embarked upon the idea of wanting to go to white people's bathroom, sit on a bus, ride the front of the bus. We had our own buses. That's right. We had our own cabs. Mm -hmm. But the problem were when they opened up and said, all right, y'all can come on and join us. They didn't want to let us go in the first place. Go ahead. Say that. 
Say that. Because they can't survive. You're talking about a lazy, a lazy behind people. We did the work. Come on now. Teach, brother, teach. But there was one from amongst them, and I'm pretty sure that I'm hoping at least that we all are aware of a gentleman by the name of Willie Lynch. Come on now. Talk about it. Mr. Lynch, that guy, that devil. Come on. If I knew where he was buried, I would go dig his grave up and kill it behind again. <laughs> go ahead, big bro. That's what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> he instituted a plan, a strategy. Come on. For these cave dwellers over here. Come on. A plan that if they followed the plan, we would be volunteer slaves. Come on now. That's right. That pit us against one another. Mm -hmm. The black against the lighter. The brown against the black. Mm -hmm. The yellow against the brown, right. the fat against the skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead now. <laughs> Divide them in whatever way you can. Make them not like one another. Mm. And in doing that, you will have yourself a willing slave. That's right. That will last up to a thousand years. Whoa. Mm. We only had 400 and something. Now. <laughs> we don't want to go to those other five. <laughs> we have to come out. We got it. We have to come out. See, the as long as we have comfort, I was rooting for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I, want, I wanted him to kick us in the eye some more. <laughs> because that's the only way we're going to come together. Come on, say that. Elijah Muhammad taught us. He said, if the teachings won't get you, the conditions will. Mm. 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 We, before integration, was forced to come together, right. was forced to live together, was forced to do to do the step. How is it? How is it that a black person can open up a business here, and any other color? It used to be just a white man, it's Hispanics, Arabs, whatever the case may be, open up a business here, and we will take our. <laughs> teach, brother, teach. <laughs> Wonderful sales over to that that other business. <laughs> Because their ice is colder. Mm. I had a, I had a, I had a, a, a store, and everybody is getting their stuff from the same place. So their food ain't no better. Their ice ain't no better. But we will go there. Listen, man, I would drive clear across town to buy from a black business. I don't care if they're selling the stuff for more. I'll pay more. Because I want them to be successful. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're not at the par, then I'm going to go in that store and let them know, you got to get your act together, man. Mm -hmm. You have to give, you have to give us the best that you have. 
And if you give us, if you give us your best, we'll, we'll buy from you. <laughs> we, we, what we do is we look at, we will go down to the Rolls Royce dealer, the Mercedes uh, dealer, the, uh, whatever type of the Bentley's or whatever the case may be. And we say, hey, look, I want that car. Until we get inside and see the price that we have to pay. <laughs> Go ahead now. There's a price to pay for liberty. Come yes. on now. There's a price to pay for liberation. Yes. Notice I don't use the word freedom. Mm -hmm. Or free. Mm. To be free. Because we we oftentimes leave off the last part of that word, freedom. Dumb. Mm. Responsibility. Come on now. There's a responsibility for being free. Yes. That's right. And it's important that we know and understand that we can do it. We can pay that price. Mm -hmm. Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. If you don't pay the price for for, for, for liberty. You're going to pay the price for slavery. Mm. That's right. That's right. Exodus. We have to exodus, people. There is no way around it. That there, there is no that we are on the bottom already in society. Mm -hmm. And other people are coming here from other countries. And because we think that their food is better than our own black people food, mm. they'll come in our community, open up their store. They don't live there. So that means that they're taking the money and taking it elsewhere. One of the things, see, I study all people. And when, when the white people if they needed a doctor, they found the best in their community, sent them to school. They became a doctor, not for another community. They became a doctor for their community. Mm -hmm. Our people got it wrong. We, we go to school. We get the education. But... We fall victim to something that the last chorus song was about in the 60s. Run, whitey, run. Uh -huh. The niggas are coming. Uh -huh. The niggas are coming. <laughs> Go ahead. Because, because we was fleeing our own community. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why the ghetto is the way it is. Mm. If our best minds leave, what can be? So that means that all of that, all of our expertise is going building someone else's world. Mm, that's right. No, I'm not gonna live in no ghetto. <laughs> that's what it, that that don't you know that that's what the opportunity is? Mm -hmm. We go out there. See, I'm talking to our elites. We go out there and we get the good the good education, the good paying jobs, even the good businesses, and we take that money somewhere else. Mm -hmm. When all we had to do, and we would have had to and we would have had to spend less of our money by 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 coming back to the black community. I can't even call where we live a community because we don't because we don't have all of the things that that it takes to be a community. Right. I think we can rightly call it a hood. <laughs> right. But there, but but I'm telling you, it's not that we don't. It's not that we don't have the money. It's not that we don't have the knowledge. 
We have it. But it's being squandered and, and, and put elsewhere. And not, we have forgot our people. So that's why our young people don't like us. Because we don't deserve to be liked. Mm. We haven't earned that. Mm-hmm. So this exodus to Mississippi is a profound idea. I, when I accepted to, to, to do the speaking, because I'm a, I mean, I'm a fairly good speaker, but, you know, but I, 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 I don't, I don't want to outshine somebody because that's not important because I'm going to get to something which is another problem that we have. I wrote a, a thing on my Facebook. And I don't want anyone to be offended by this. The object is not to offend. The object is to enlighten. We need to give the white man back his religion. Come on now. We need to give the Arabs back their religion. Come on now. There is nothing more dear to a people than their religion. And if and if your oppressor is giving you a religion, don't you know that there was a time that they wouldn't let us read? Come on now. And the only time they allowed us to read was when they gave us that damn Bible. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Don't be offended. I'm not. I'm talking, to, I'm talking to my Christian brothers and sisters and my, my Muslim brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Because I know that digs deep. I remember once I was in the Nation of Islam at the time. I don't know if y'all know of the, the gentleman by the name of Joe Tex. Yes, I heard of him. He was a singer back in the um, the sixties and fifties, but he became a Muslim, a follower of Elijah Muhammad. And we went to uh, we went to uh, to see Joe Tex at a at a speaking engagement. His name was Yusuf Aziz, mm. and what he did was he was up and he was talking to us. Joe Tex took a picture, that white picture that was depicted as Jesus. He held it up to the people. And Joe Tex, now I'm a Muslim, he's talking to Muslims, right? He held that picture up and he hauled off and hit it. And everybody. (laughs) Because we don't know the, the whole that white people have on us. That's right. They gave us themselves as God. That's right. I'm not getting excited. Come on. I guarantee you, you cannot go to the Jewish community and take a picture of Hitler and tell them that's their personal savior. That's right. That's right. That's right. We have some serious issues, but they're not they're not insurmountable. We can, I mean, they're not insurmountable. We can um we can overcome this stuff. It's, it's small stuff. When the dream is big enough, we've got to want liberty at all costs. As my beloved sister said, by any means necessary. Mm-hmm. That is important. We have 35 to 45, 47 million black people in this country now. If 35 million gave $1 a week, 
How much money is that? 35 million given one dollar. That's 35 million dollars. That's right. Multiply that. How many weeks in a year? 52. Mm -hmm. We're crying about reparation. <laughs> Not to say we don't deserve it, but that's that should be a second thought for us. Mm -hmm. Because the average one of us, if they gave us a million dollars tomorrow, we were, we we're gonna run down and buy a brand new brand new car that we can't afford. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go out there. We're gonna buy all kinds of bags. <laughs> Talking to the ladies. Hope, oh, hope. Oh, well, guys do it too. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, but what I'm basically saying is that we would squander it. We would squander it. Yes. Yeah. You know why? Teach. Because it was given to us. Mm -hmm. mm. We didn't work for it. So we don't put the value on it that we should put on it. See, it's important to understand our weaknesses, not to down, down, to down, but to understand the weaknesses so we can develop strength. That's right. It's impossible. I mean, it is, it, I mean, it is, it is uh, possible When we have a vision, our vision has to be bigger than a bag of weed. Go ahead. Huh. Say that. Our vision has to be bigger than a pee hole. Yes, they call it a vagina. <laughs> our vision has to be bigger than a penis. Mm -hmm. They call it a yick. I said yick. <laughs> 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 you teaching, brother. You teaching. <laughs> this is um, it's really easy. It's really, really easy, people. Free your mind. I went to St. Louis, Missouri the other day. They had Black Panthers from all over the country. No one knew about it at all. They had machine guns, recoilless rifles, grease guns, Lugans, 25 of them, all armed. And the chief of police met me at the airport when I arrived, and they were there, right there at the steps. He said, you were violating the law. Yeah, we're violating the law. He said, we're tired of our white and black leaders, Jackie and Martin and Bobby being killed, we're going to protect this man while he's here. And they didn't arrest one of them. Because they said if you arrest one, then someone's going to die because we are ready to kill. Black power means black dignity. Just as surely as you are proud to be white, we're proud to be black. Black is beautiful, baby. It's pretty. I always say to my uh, brothers, I say, baby, don't worry about the white chicks. We got everything from chalk to charcoal in our own race. You know, see? Black is beautiful. Black is beautiful. Black power means dignity. It means we're going to walk side by side with you or through you, we're going to be with dignity and integrity. We don't want any more than you have, and we're not going to accept any less than you have. That's my power. <laughs>